Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to this exciting video where we are going to try some old makeup. At least makeup is old relatively quickly in this space. So some of these are actually years old and others just a couple of months. Either way, they were on the verge of being forgotten by me or they actually were. Or I've just not used them in a long time. And maybe that's the same for you as well. Maybe this is a good reminder reminder to pick up these products again if you do still have them old makeup is still good makeup that's of course knowledge that is known but still quickly forgotten when a new thing arrives so i thought before filming my half year favorites of all the new things that i bought this year let's discuss some of the older favorites that i still have so with that intro out of the way let's get started subscribe if you like this video and uh well yes let's get to it I'm actually, you can't really see it, but I'm wearing this super tropical top. You know, I'm making the most of this slightly summerish weather that we're having today. So I thought it would be fun to have a look at this one again. I think it's about a year old. This is a liquid liner palette that uh, Sarah New SFX did with Makeup Revolution. And it's amazing and I actually haven't used it for months so I thought we could maybe play with the reds and the oranges or maybe the pink I'm not really sure yet where I'm going so I thought to set that up for success I'm going to do a neutral eyeshadow palette I don't have that many neutral eyeshadow palettes but I still had some to choose from and what I decided was this one <laughs> remember of course some of these things you can't get anymore, but this is more just to remind you to use your old stuff and to remind myself, really. So this is the Red Dragon palette that Judy did in collaboration with Uden's Eye. I think it was about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, this is my least used one out of the three because it's so neutral. But I thought, you know, let me get up. Today, it could be really nice. To wear this one so i'm going to prime my eyes using this revolution prime and lock eyeshadow base i did buy this slightly more recently but like i said there are a couple of those as well in the mix how how did i do this so let's start with the eyeshadow palette i'm really going to do something quite basic so i'm going to start just with this one serene in my crease I'm using a relatively big fluffy brush, which probably still has a little bit of dark brown on it. But it's fine. <laughs> I actually wanted there to be a little bit more shadow in this tone. Yeah, this brush is definitely not clean. <laughs> but it'll be a nice mix. And now the brush is basically clean, so I'm just adding a little bit more of that orange pop. I like this already. So now I'm taking a slightly smaller brush, which is stained purple, but I'm going in with a pretty deep brown. So I think it's going to be all right. And because I want to keep this look a little bit more warm toned, I'm going into fire, which is, well, you could call it a brown, but you could also call it a burgundy. It's somewhere in between. This palette is honestly such good quality. It's actually the best quality of the three collab palettes that came out in that year. It's just that I like the color story the least. Oh wait, there's definitely a little bit more red in here than I thought. That's nice. I do like it. I'm going to use my finger to wipe away this inner part though. That went a little bit too extreme too quickly. Now I'm going back with that other brush, no additional product. Oh wow, this got way more vampy than I anticipated. I always lose my control a little bit when I think a color is more neutral. I just blah blah, plop it on my eyes. And then <laughs> I take a step, step back and I realize that it's actually quite intense. But it's okay. Taking a little bit more of Serene. 
it is a nice sultry summer look I guess I'm thinking what shimmers I shall use of course I'm very tempted by the multi-chrome but I think I'm going in with overheat which is this one putting that on the inner part of my eye and with another finger I'm going into amber which is a little bit deeper and I'm putting that more on the outer part well center to two-thirds of my eye tapping it slightly into the deeper shade That's really nice, actually. This palette doesn't really have an inner corner shade. I'm just going to use my highlight for that. But before that, I'm going to take this flat shader brush and take a little bit of Luna, which is the multi-chrome, and I'm going to put it on my lower lash line. I just, I can't help myself. I was recently thinking that I don't really have any neutral multi-chromes. But now I realize that I do. It's in this palette. And it's a really nice one. It's a bronzy to green to purple type of shade. Fits this look really nicely. Yeah, I'm very content with this. I almost don't really want to ruin it with any colorful liner, but I'm going to. So I found my little eyeliner brush from Essence. I filled up a little top with water. And now let's decide what color to use. So I'm gravitating towards this orange. I just think that would look really cool. I've used the gold plenty times. I don't think the yellow will look that pretty. I think the red will just disappear. Yeah, I've convinced myself. I'm going in with the orange. I'm not going to do anything graphic. Just a line with a little wing. And it's funny because I just did a gouache painting for the first time in for like a forever. So I guess I feel inspired to paint. <laughs> oh, great. So I think that's long enough. So I specifically let it dry and I'm taking a little bit more so I can do my wings with my eyes open. Now I got the shape right and now I could even add a little bit more. All right, I think that went pretty well. It's going to look better with some mascara and lashes, I hope. But I think I let it dry long enough, so that's already a plus. <laughs> For eyeliner, I picked out this one from uh, Charlotte Tilbury. I used to use this all the time and I guess I kind of forgot about it. It's getting really tiny. This is the, oh, just the liner duo in Copper Charge. And the nice thing about this one is that I always use the matte burgundy side to tight line. I guess I stopped tight lining altogether. Now I'm going to do it again. And then the other side is a metallic copper shade, which I'm going to use in my lower waterline. I'll admit this pencil is a couple of years old and it's definitely getting a little bit drier. You know what? Maybe I should try to finish this one up before it goes bad. Yeah, it really doesn't glide as easily anymore as it once did. So before I apply some mascara, let's pick out the lashes. So I went into a deep dark box in that closet over there. And I found a couple of pairs of lashes that I don't really use. But I don't understand why. So these are the Demi Wispies. Which I'm not sure about. Maybe a little bit too small for this intense look. Then I have these, which I bought for uh, one euro at the drugstore. Which I think if I cut off the ends, it'll be perfect. And I also picked out these. And these are beautiful. But they're a little bit rigid. So I've convinced myself. I'm going to go with these. I'll cut them. So I applied some glue. There are some weird honking noises outside. Try to ignore them if you hear them. <laughs> All right, um, while the glue is drying down, I'm going to apply apply some mascara. And 
this was quite defined. This is my favorite mascara, the Lash Princess. And I just said in a video that I should repurchase this. And then I found this and I'm wondering if maybe it's still kind of okay. So let's see. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's the it's going to last me another month. But as a base for falsies, I think it's okay. I do think this is one of the mascaras that I meant to throw out actually, but it's fine. Yeah, after this video, I'm going to throw out this mascara. I'm pretty sure I already talked about it in an empties video as well. So just I guess it was a mistake to put it back in the bag. So, yeah, but I definitely need to buy a new one of this because this brush is just a lot easier than the Lash Like a Boss mascara that I'm currently using, which I don't hate either, but I think this is better. So I specifically did a lot of mascara on my front lashes because, well, the lashes that i just cut off they begin quite abruptly quite long let me show you so i feel like i needed something <laughs> to ground them all right so right now it's looking a little bit weird because i smushed together those front lashes but i'm just going to let the glue dry completely before messing with it but i do like them actually cutting my lashes <laughs> um has really made me like most of my lashes so i really should have cut them from the from the beginning but i figured they fit my eyes so i don't really need to but well i guess they don't exactly fit my eyes and also i like them to leave a little bit of room in the beginning so this is a lot better i actually really like this eye look i like the the orange as well it's fun all right, this is going to be a long video, I think. I'm already at half an hour <laughs> just doing my eyes. All right, now for some face makeup. I'm going to do a lot more face makeup than I'm used to these past months because I've really been liking a light base with just a little bit of concealer or just a little bit of color corrector. We're not doing that today. <laughs> I picked out the Estee Lauder Double Wear because I actually own this and I don't think there's a lot left in it. And I really should use it before it goes bad. And also, this was one of the first foundations that I bought that actually has like the proper undertone for me. So why not? But because it is a little bit more natural matte, I'm going to mix it with the Le Beige Sheer Healthy Glow Highlighting Fluid in the shade Pearly Glow which will make it a little bit more natural, I hope. So I don't, I never bought the pump for this foundation, so I'm just going to pour it on my hand. Okay, okay, it's still fluid. I think I took too much. It's okay. So I have this, and I'm just adding quite a bit of that healthy glow fluid, because if I remember correctly, this doesn't, isn't very opaque. So you can use quite a lot. Mixing those on the back of my hand. I'm truly quite the painter today. <laughs> I hope I'm going to edit that out. Yeah, this is a very yellow undertone. But that's always when I realize that my skin is actually quite yellow. So it looks a little bit light now, but it'll oxidize a little bit and I think it'll be all right. You know, it is a nice match for my neck. I just got quite a bit of sun. Not recently, we've been having a lot of rain, but before that. So we'll need to add a little bit of bronzer to this. But I like it with the pearly glow from Chanel Der Derbay added to it. Can you tell I'm tired? I'm forgetting all my English. I've always found that that pearly glow from Chanel makes things a little bit 
difficult to blend on my skin. I know that the Estee Lauder uh, on itself, on its own, actually blends super easily. So I think it's the, the pearly glow, but it's okay. It did actually add a very nice glow. And I'm really going old, old school today because I only packed a powder bronzer. Oh no, I do have a liquid blush, so I guess it's okay. But I feel like the routine that I'm doing is also a little bit old school. But you know, I don't hate this look. Not yet. <laughs> All right, so next I picked out these concealers from Too Faced, the Born This Way, just the regular multi-use sculpting concealer, because I thought we're doing a full face, so let's do it. Uh, I have two shades, one is Cloud and one is Marshmallow. I think this one, this used to be my preference, but I think I'm liking this one more right now. So let me use that one. I really did like this concealer, but I did think, yeah, it's okay. I did think that it creased a little bit too easily for me but then also i used quite a lot of it so maybe that's it yeah i think the color marshmallow is actually pretty good for me i know this is morgan turner's favorite still so this is in honor of her wow this is full, full coverage. It's only when you use older products that you realize how much less coverage products have these days. I mean, I used to say that the Estee Lauder Double Wear was actually more of a medium coverage. <laughs> now I don't feel that way anymore. And also, I never noticed how full coverage that Too Faced is, but it's nice. I think... I'll use it again a couple of times and then use a little bit less, even less than now. And I do believe I used a lot less than a couple of years ago because I'm curious. It actually looks pretty good. I like this shade for me. Blend it out super easily. Look at that. Look at that being flawless. Now, before we add a little bit of powder, I do want to use a liquid blush and I'm dubbing and umming between two so i have this one the hyaluronic acid miracle pure blush from max factor or this one i think it's going to be this one this is the blush from made by mitchell this used to be one of my favorite shades it still is but for the last couple of months i haven't really used this and take a look you can actually see a little bit of windowing so i think this might be the first liquid blush that i actually finish up and it's quite neon, but it's pretty. It's actually exactly the same shade as my scrunchie. So I'm adding quite a bit because the powder is, well, a little bit of powder is still going on top. And this is the type of blush that once you blend it into your foundation, it definitely looks a little bit less neon. So. This color is perfect. Yeah, I think this blush is really cute. <laughs> so now to add just a little bit of powder and I thought I'd do a more recent one that I kind of forgot about until I made my list for my favorites for uh, the halfway year point. I raved and raved about this one from Makeup Revolution like three or four months ago. And then I think what happened is that I got two other powders that I love even more. But let's revisit this one. I'm going to use the pressed one because I honestly don't feel like I even need a lot of powder. So I'm not going to add a lot. I feel like right now I would even try this concealer without any powder. But let's do it anyway. So I'm just taking a little bit of that translucent. You know, this is actually really nice. It's quite blurring. I don't know if you can see. I like to put it underneath my eyes and then sort of in the center of my face. I think it is very blurring. All right. It's, I think it is actually a little bit better than one of the new powders that I have been using. Not the Huda one. The Huda one is like an honest to God gem. But 
maybe a little bit better than the wet and wild one that i've been using i'm just i'm loving the blur so much that i'm keep, that i keep adding i love this i love this base it's like super full coverage but it looks so nice for bronzer, I picked out this. This is from Dior. It's the Contour Palette. These two, I think, are actually highlighters, but they work really well as light bronzers for me. These two are like true matte contour powders, but I figured I would go into this one because it's a little bit shimmery and it's a nice light color. Maybe I'll mix it with a little bit of this one. Let's just see what happens. I actually only use this shade usually. So this is the the throwback hmm. not sure if i'm seeing a lot of it oh yeah now i'm seeing it it's actually a lot more cool toned than i thought it was so <laughs> it's creating a very muddy shadow on my face that i'm not loving i don't think this is a very i don't think this is a palette that still holds up actually maybe the contour shade does but it actually does look pretty nice on my forehead it's just a very deep shade i think that's the thing it looks like it's going to be pretty light and it is called a highlighter of course a highlight for deep skin but still i didn't expect it to be <laughs> this deep you know i used to really prefer a lot more contrast on my face so I think this was exactly the type of shade that I used to really like. Yeah, it's not my favorite. It looks a little bit gray. Now for highlight, I actually picked out the counterpart of this palette that I think is still very good, which is the Dior Backstage Highlighting Palette in the shade uh, 004 Rose Gold. I don't think they sell these anymore, but I know a lot of people have them. So this is my reminder, or this is your reminder to use them again. Of course, I've used this one to death. What I wanted to use today is this one because I completely forgot, but this is actually one of the few peachy colored highlighters that you have that are suitable for my skin tone. And it's just so beautiful, yet I completely forgot about it. Whenever I think about this palette, I think about that pink shade or the gold one, but I actually really like the peach shade as well. And it matches this look perfectly. So I'm just putting a bit of this on. It's a baked chalet formula. It's really nice. They do actually still sell number one of this palette, the Universal, which I'm sure is also really nice. I don't have that one. Yes, this highlight is, is still really nice. Just making it a little bit more blinding. This is the type of highlight that'll glow and shimmer really nice in dim lighting all right we're nearing the finish line the next product that i want to use is this one this is the super glue from catrice i bought this about a year ago and i honestly don't remember how i feel about it but i figured now it's a year later it should really have thickened up a little bit I'm sure it wasn't as good as whatever I was using at the time, because then I would have kept using it. But now that my Too Faced brow gel is finished, I want to see if this still works. You'd think this, work, this would work wonders, because it's really thick and sticky. But I think that waxy structure that or texture that the Too Faced has just works a lot better for me. So it looks really nice at this moment, but I'm already seeing them falling. All right, finally, all we need is a lip. And I picked out this one. This is Charlotte Tilbury Angel Alessandra, which I love so much that I'm almost done with it. This is all I have left of it. Yet I don't wear it anymore because I don't really wear a lot of lipsticks anymore. Just really, really shiny ones. But this one is still pretty shiny. So I picked out two lip liners that could go with this. I could either make it more bright with this MAC one. Or I could tone it down a little bit with this one. I think that's what I'm going to do. I feel like it's already a pretty intense look. So this is from Michaela X Glam Light. You may have heard this before on my channel. 
but this is actually the one product from the whole collection that I don't use that much which is the deeper lip kit so this was the lip liner that was in that deeper lip kit it's actually a lot more purple than I remember I hope it'll work with my lipstick <laughs> I figured it would go because I also have a little bit of purple in the eyeshadow. All right, let's see if it works with the lipstick. <laughs> I'm, I'm optimistic. You know what? I think that actually looks really cool. <laughs> I'm not sure if it'll be my new favorite combination, but... I didn't really have an older lip liner that would go with this. I think what is perfect with this one is one of Glamlight's newer eye li lip liners from the Glamlight X Morty, uh, Rick and Morty collection, the red lip kit. It has this sort of depth, but a lot warmer. Still, I'm not hating this combo. I think it looks kind of nice. And actually this lipstick is looking pretty juicy and of course you can't beat this packaging it's just stunning so that is my finished makeup look for the day what do you think i mean i don't like the fact that my brows keep falling down that's honestly the the biggest flaw in this whole video the brow gel is just not strong enough but i'm glad i gave it another try because otherwise you never know i kind of really love the eye look i don't like the the bronzer stuff either. I think it's a little bit too metallic and too deep and too gray. How can a highlight be gray? Does this? Well, I guess it kind of does look gray. That's weird. I wonder, you know, I thought if you have deeper skin, it would look more flattering to have more of a warm tone, light highlight shade. But I guess I don't know. <laughs> Let me know, do you have this? Does it work for you? <laughs> so I'm really glad I did this full face of nothing new. I rediscovered some old favorites, some things that I really think I should push myself to finish them up. And I had a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video as well. Uh, subscribe if you liked it and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.